What's up, everybody? Episode 24, Mealy Stocks here. Let's get into some new wax releases. Crazy week, week of releases, as well as my thoughts on the PSA price increases. Let's go. out there my name is Jamil I am the owner of the Mealy Pops shop here in Gainesville for Florida not Florida Florida we are a pretty much every one a one-stop shop for everything you can think of cards wax supplies all that jazz as well as um, many other things that we do so uh, we're gonna get into episode 24 today we are part of the slab stocks network thank you guys for watching uh, a lot of crazy things happening with um, us and our channel and things really really cool news I want to share with you guys so Please take a look at this. This is a project that I've been working on for about two, three months and forming a team. It's a 60 second bit, but go ahead, take a look at this and enjoy. Check out our new project that we got coming to YouTube. What's up everybody? This is my shop, the Mealy Pop Shop. We're located in Gainesville, Florida. And I got some exciting news for you. We sell sports cards and trading cards and we are gonna be documenting this and coming out with the Card Shop Show. Check us out on YouTube, come see us and subscribe to our channel. March 8th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, The Card Shop Show on YouTube. You heard it. Don't miss it. Same hat. No glasses. <laughs> Changing it up on you guys. That's me. That's my stunt double who did that. No, no. Uh, please check it out. We're releasing our first video Monday, March 8th, which is coming up. I just saw it. Um, it's really cool. It's going to feature some really cool things. And then we're going to actually, we've been planning to do these episodes twice a month, but we're going to do one for The Dallas Card Show that will pop out as well on March uh, 15th. So be ready, we got a lot coming very quick. I'm excited for that. And episode one, March 8th, we're gonna do a watch party. It's gonna play at 9 p.m. on Monday. Aaron might make, make a little feature in that as well from uh, the Slab Stocks Network. So hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. You guys will tune in, go subscribe to the Card Shop Show. That'd be great. All right, let's get into it this week. Um, I am uh, just really taken back by how <laughs> How we had no releases for forever, and then now it seems like every single week we're getting four to six releases uh, across the gamut. So let's get it with this week, um, and I'll just kind of go through what you guys can see on camera uh, right here with all of the four releases. So I'll start out with this one. I know you guys have been super uh, big on Marvel. A lot of you guys out there have been following Marvel. Upper Deck came out with Marvel Ages, which is really kind of a, a throwback to the comics and, and, and how they, they do this, but... It's really an iconic uh, 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 branding element. You know, they, they have um, the two inserts per pack. There's some really cool um, potential chase cards that you can hit as well. Looks like there's a 300 card um, uh, base set. Um, I haven't really opened these yet. They have uh, some cards that actually feature coins in them as well. So uh, Marvel Age is coming out. Reason reason why I'm bringing that up and I wanted to start out with that is because um, Marvel has just really been on a tear. And now, I don't know if you've really paid attention, but things like WandaVision... Um, things that are coming out on the Disney Plus network are starting to catch a, a momentum, whereas uh, they're going to allude to some of these movies. So I think that that movie realm of cards, I think that the Disney Plus series uh, with all the Marvel characters are going to start to really, really start to ramp up here. Hopefully they make some movie uh, cards as well. Spider-Man uh, was just released, the, the thing I think it's called No Way Home, which is supposed to be about the multiverse, which is going to bring in all the other elements of, of Spider-Man. Uh, a little bit of nerding out there, but I, I think it's not a bad... Uh, a bad play if you guys like cards to collect or if you want to try and grade and flip as well. So Marvel Ages comes out this week. Uh, we, we just released it on, on Wednesday. Um, then there were three big releases on uh, Wednesday as well with football, soccer, and basketball. I'll start with football. Uh, plates and Patches, you guys know about Plates and Patches uh, brand with the plates, the one-on-one -on -one plates in every box. Uh, you get some really nice patch autos. Um, kind of a, a, a lackluster product in the sense of not a lot of stuff in it. You just get the one pack, but it's definitely a fun rip. 
uh, more breaking and kind of those elements. I've seen some cool cards come out of this. Uh, they put the NFL uh, 100 autographs, I think, in this as well. Uh, so there's some unique cards in there as well. Um, the price point on Marvel Ages, I think, is about 125, 130. Price point on plates and patches right now, um, I think, about 350, 325 to 350. As you guys know, things can change very quickly in the card world. But let's talk about this one. This is a big one right here. Good old Donruss basketball. Now, we really are seeing the price hike with basketball cards from last year to this year. So last year, uh, even the year before that, Donruss always being kind of that big box, right? Tons of cards, tons of packs. Not a very expensive product. You don't feel like uh, you, you know you were really getting a ton in it. You know, years and years ago, it was really the 24 pack boxes or 18 pack boxes, right? Now they last year moved to the jumbo packs. You get the 10 cards per pack, is it or 12? Let me check really quick. I think it's 10 cards per pack. Yeah, 10 per pack, 30 cards per pack. But the big thing that kind of blew up about this is is the net marvels, right? Um, last year with the inserts. Now we're getting other inserts like crunch time and things in this that people are really getting hyped about. You have the next day autographs. You have the autographs per box. You get one auto, one mem per box. But the rated rookies, all the rated rookies iterations, the parallels, the numbered, all that jazz is playing a lot into this. So Donruss right now price point is around nine seventy five to a thousand dollars a box. Is basketball overpriced right now? Um, is it too high for the class? I've heard, I hear the chatters. I'm in a lot of group chats, especially with our, our Mealy Pops Briggs crew and stuff. And I watch people and I, I listen to people. And I don't know. I, I don't know if it's overpriced because here's why. I look at eBay. I see some of the sales of the Net Marvels. I see the sales of the autos. I see the sales of the, the rated rookies. Uh, raw, of course. And we'll get into gray here in a second. But um, they're pretty high. And you're getting five, six, seven Net Marvels in a, in a box of hobby. Um, so we, I watched a couple guys rip yesterday. I don't feel like their return was that bad. Um, of course, you could always get crushed on something when it comes to wax, but a very interesting product. So as you get out there and you and you navigate that world and you're opening up these uh, these boxes, you're looking at close to $100 a pack, right? Maybe a little bit more on these on these if you just want to rip a pack. I mean, that's kind of where we're at, guys and gals. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I do know from my standpoint, and I've, and I've done episodes on this before with allocations, I got very little of this from distributors. I'm talking like in the single box numbers, one box, two, and it doesn't really help. I mean, I'm not crying wolf. I'm not saying pity us at all. Don't get catch that at all. Um, but, you know, you're starting to see less of this get into the shops, more of it go direct, Panini selling it direct. And then, of course, the distributors having, you know, the product on the secondary market, $1,000 for rebuy. So it's very tricky. Um, but I do think Wood Donner's not a bad brand. It's It's got the rated rookie. People love that. We'll see where it goes. I'd love to see what your guys' thoughts are in the comment about thousand dollars a box, especially some of these you go, some of you out there who remember buying seventeen, eighteen dollars, you know, with uh, Durant on the cover, paying four dollars a pack for a pack of twenty, you know, twenty-four packs in a box or whatnot. So just something to think about with basketball. We're we're entering into an echelon where I don't think basketball prices are ever going to be something that we all once thought. Um, I don't see. I think anybody saw Donruss being that expensive, and it is. And then I don't, you know, Prism now getting the designs and the release. How expensive is Prism going to be when it comes out? Are we going to be looking at $1,500, $1,800, $2,000, $2, $2,500 a box? I don't know. We'll see. But Prism's going to be hot, and it's going to be wild when it comes to uh, what, what, hits the, what hits the shelves, uh, what we can even get for the store um, versus the retail world, as you guys all know. So those are three big releases. Um, let me go over the last one, which is one of my favorites, right? English Premier League. My mom is from Ipswich, England. My aunt, is uh, she lives in uh, uh, Norwich, the Canaries. So Ipswich Town FC, uh, the Canaries being the Premier League last year. Um, and I, my uncle is, is a big Manchester United fan. He actually is the guy who gave me the nickname Mealy Pops when I was a young young lad in England on the pitch um, playing soccer with my, my, my friends and family. That was something we always say. They'd say Mealy Pops because Mealy was my nickname. So that's where it came from. And this is kind of just, you know, full circle for me watching this. So we have English Premier League second year. Prism Soccer releases uh, uh, release on Wednesday. <coughs> a 12-pack product. You guys know Prism. We went from Prism Basketball Talks now to Prism EPL. And I think you're getting uh, one autograph per box. There's some really unique autographs. We hit a Paul Scholes in our breaks last night. I've seen a buddy um, hit a hit a, uh, a Rooney the other night. Um, I saw a Bastion Swineslager just hit today in shot. So another cool product. About $700 a box for a box of Prism. I think from the soccer market, I'm going to go out and say it, 
I don't know. I think that's probably a route about the right price point for this product. There's a lot of parallels, a ton of stuff in here. I can't break it all down for you because this year more than ever, there is a ton of parallels that we have seen uh, in comparison to other prison uh, soccer years. I'm sure Slap Stocks FC is, is, is discussing this as well. But um, Prism EPL released this week. So price points, EPL 675, 700, uh, Donruss 1,000, Plates and Patras uh, 350, uh, and Marvel Ages about 125. Four, four products that I really enjoy. You got the main line, basketball and football, and then you got the kind of fringe with Marvel and uh, Prism. Uh, we also had Clear Cut Hockey. I didn't bring it out in the set to talk about, but another release uh, that's big from the 1920. It's crazy to think that we're still getting 1920 hockey product put out. But there you go on, on that. So there's some cool releases. <laughs> I wanted to take uh, a few minutes in this episode and just discuss uh, PSA. Um, as you guys know, um, we if you don't know, we are a PSA dealer our shop. We are on their list. Um, we we did a lot of processing. You know, we got tens of, I don't know, tens of thousands, but lot, thousands, thousands, thousands of cards. Yeah, I think tens of thousands is fair to say at PSA right now from the shop. Uh, those are shop cards from me employees as well as customers. Uh, we have we have done a lot with PSA. They've helped our business grow immensely. Um, it's been a company that um, I think has out of all of the grading, and I'm not talking about the gamut of grading, and not naming other names. I really feel like they're trying. Um, and, I'll, and I'll just say that I think they're trying to really increase and, and meet the demands on um, the private sale obviously with Nat Turner and other folks uh, recently and we saw this massive hike on Monday we all knew it was coming I think people knew it was coming Beckett did their hike two weeks ago or so and now we see the PSA hike um, the economy which is I think the old 20 day or, or, or whatnot being suspended so they can catch up you know bulk ultra modern being what was it $25 a card and then uh modern gaming and vintage being about $20 a card. You know, you're looking at, at that, you know, in my estimation, still right now about a year turnaround. But what's going to happen, and, and I'll talk on this twofold. We'll talk on the impact it might have, and then let's talk about um, uh, the cost. So we'll do the cost first. It just changes how we interpret what to grade. And some of you out there might be really upset that you make you might not be able to grade your, you know, your retail hits of, of a Zion base Chronicles or um, you know, uh, a Luca insert from Prism two years ago, um, you know, or a, a Jalen Hurts instant impact silver or, or whatever iteration they have of that. I can't remember them all, the, the, the insert sets. Maybe that's a good thing. You know, maybe maybe we're, we're freeing up PSA and these companies to, to pump out more of the higher echelon cards for grading, uh, what really brings eyes to the hobby. I'm not saying there's not a place for low-end grading. I think there is. But I do think, and I think we're seeing it, that PSA doesn't really want to have um, a say in that. So what my theory is, and I'll get into the impact here in a second about how I think it's going to change cards, but I do think, and, and what I also am seeing with cards, I do think that you're going to see a rise of maybe um, a uh, you know a CGC for Pokemon, right? Or for Marvel cards. That's the, that's the Sarasota company. Um, or CSG for sports. I do think you're going to see more SGC type stuff. They're, they're over in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, HFA with their color cording matching. It's not for me, um, but I'm not knocking them. I think they have you know a unique thing going. Uh, we'll see how that impacts the market. Um, you know, there's always Beckett, but I think Beckett you know is is, is is really up there with the price structure of PSA. I'm just being transparent, not seeing it match the market structure of where the pricing is. You know, you're seeing PSA tens be about two X or one point five X more than a Gem Mint BGS. Um, hopefully, you know, there's some, I think Beckett's had a place in this world too. Hopefully it sticks around and they can continue to put out, you know, stuff. But PSA looks like they're really focusing more on what I believe is the more marketable card. So the hundred dollar graded cards and up probably want to getting out of that, you know, cards that are PSA eights and nine selling for 15 to 50 bucks. Um, and we'll see how that goes. How long will it take them to catch up? Another thing, you know, that we should talk about is, you know, there's, there are millions and millions of cards behind in their backlog. So it's just going to take you know a year to catch up before they can really even realize these price increases and, and whatnot and what they're doing. Um, I guess the bottom line for me as a card shop owner is I watch and I see people rip. I don't think it affects the card shop a ton because a lot of the people that rip and enjoy cards for the hobby and the beautiful thing that it is are not looking always to grade cards. They're great maybe doing it to preserve their cards, so timing is, is not a big thing for them. I think this impacts the market from the flipper standpoint and from everybody that you know who's constantly looking to buy and sell and make something on somebody. Um, I think that 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 world is going to be impacted. Um, I think you're, you're going to see less low-end 
uh, in terms of uh, the base prism 1920 LeBron first Laker and these things the second year Trey Young prism base being graded because you know in my eyes those are raw cards that should be sold as raw cards um, I don't really I don't really see the, the significance of PSA tens in those and, and whatnot um, so we'll see where that all kind of pans out where it goes that's gonna change uh, their processing model it's gonna change how they put things out um, it's gonna change you know how, how you spend money a, a, as a collector or a flipper investor uh, with graded cards um, I've had this question asked me a lot how does that impact my cards now well I think it does impact your cards slightly now I think you, you know you're gonna see a rise in PSA graded cards a, a minimal rise but you have to remember something those millions of cards that they're behind on are still all of that low-end kind of blah that I call it where you're gonna have tons and tons and tons of Bowman first papers and tons of prism rookies of guys who are on the bench or whatnot and and, and they're gonna be around for a long time uh, probably eight months ten months a year and then after that maybe what we're gonna see is that that increase in that lower end world where those cards will you know be realized um, don't get me wrong I think other people are gonna start submitting to other companies and we're gonna see an influx with SGC CSG HFA and, and whatnot maybe even Beckett no sub uh, we're gonna see a ton more of that stuff as well I don't know if that really helps the market uh, we'll see how that pans out but the days of PSA cheap grading is gone you know it's just gone and uh, it makes sense to where we are in the market all right so what's the trickle-down effect in the market that we see now and I don't think we're gonna lose people I don't think it's going to affect uh, the intensity of people being excited about cards I do think it's going to affect things about how wax is opened and that's what kind of why I did this episode together you know you think about like a Donruss box right in front of me somebody's okay with spending a thousand bucks because they know <coughs> maybe 10 of those cards I can grade spend you know at the old rates you know 10 15 bucks to grade them in a bulk eight years that eight months down the road not eight years eight months down the road ten months down the road I'm gonna get a return on my investment where I can you now make the price of the box back if I get completely crushed that's no longer a thing anymore so I think that you're gonna see more of the purists and the hobbyist people that really enjoy ripping just continue to do that less of the investors buying wax and in a way you know I know this is counterintuitive to me and my business model but I hope that we see the price of wax come down a little bit so that we can have more and more people getting into this and I hope that they do create uh, these companies are creating more uh, affordable wax options for people so we'll see how that that works um, we're also gonna see you know I like I like I mentioned I alluded to just other grading alternatives what that means are you know is is the is the market right for another grading company to come in uh, you know computerized grading are we gonna see that we've been talking about that for years now so we'll just kind of play it by ear see how it pans out uh, stick around with PSA stick around with grading um, stick around with those things I, I don't think it's a bad thing I think that they still put out a good product and uh, of course the gem mint PSA 10 is always gonna have its place so all right wrap up the episode go check out the card shop show on YouTube we'd really appreciate it uh, subscribe to our um, channel it's gonna be something cool really put a lot of work into it and I hope to kind of dock you vlog show you guys what it's like in the card shop first episode is gonna be kind of more of an intro and then we're gonna get into the Dallas card show and then more and more and more and more things so I look forward to it we hope to bring you some good content and for those who don't have a card shop let us be your home card shop check us out mealypops.com the card shop show on YouTube and we will see ya <laughs>